and then all this. Now let's take an example. Uh, let's say in this room there are like 10, 12 odd people and I send a message to buy vanilla ice cream to all of you. All of you do buy. Because why? The price was brilliant, the, the brand was known to me and all of you, for example, like vanilla ice cream, all of you buy. Okay? So I as a, as a marketeer would clap and say I have like a 100% conversion. It's fantastic. Now let's change it a little bit. Let's see that out of the 10 or 12 of you here, while I sent the email, your laptops or iPads were here and two or three of you were actually outside. Went to the washroom, having a coffee, so you never got that email. But there's a TV right outside which you saw, which was playing a vanilla ice cream ad. You liked that ad, you went and bought. So nine of you were here, you got the email from me. You liked it, you bought the ice cream. Three of you never saw the email, were outside, looked at the TV, saw the same ad and still bought it. Now, if I were to be the marketeer and I would say, okay, nine people got it, all of them took it, clap, clap. I have a hundred percent conversion. But the three of you who were outside and saw the same ad or same offer through some other means and still bought it, that means my efficiency of the campaign was zero. Means, irrespective of whether I would have sent the email to you or not, you would have still bought it. The radio, your friend told you, oh, this is a good ice cream, why would you buy it? You saw an ad on the TV, you saw a billboard outside on the road. How do I effectively measure? Now, this is a very simple example that I gave you on how measurement can go horribly wrong. What you think of as being an incredible success is actually failing. How does analytics also help here, which is without prejudice, and without bias, intelligently measure the effectiveness of what you have done and also recommend that given this pattern of uh, occurrences, what you should do going forward.